Hello, my name is Mr. Tom Froze, and these are my thoughts on illustration. This is a bi-weekly podcast about showing up and growing up as an illustrator. Welcome to episode 8. Today we're going to continue our conversation about getting feedback on our work. In the last episode, I asked you if you want comfort or solutions. Do you want encouragement or critique? Do you want to feel validated or do you want to be challenged and get stronger? I know episode 7 was a bit on the shorter side and I didn't really offer any real practical tips on getting critical feedback. But like I said, it took me a long time to write on this topic and it kind of got away from me. Anyway, I've got more to say on the topic of solutions or critical feedback today, so please settle in, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and let's get into it right after these messages. If you like what you hear in today's episode, you can support me by following me and rating and reviewing this podcast wherever you happen to be listening from. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe and maybe leave me a little feedback in the comments about how this episode helped you today. You can also support me on Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to my live monthly drawing meetups and more. Join today at patreon.com slash tomfroze. Chapter 1. Edward. I was already three years into my freelancing career as an illustrator. I was getting steady work and I even had an agent. I'd even won a few awards by this point. But for some reason, I thought it was necessary to seek outside feedback from an industry professional on my work. Specifically, I wanted a portfolio review. Like many times before and many times after, I was feeling restless about my current body of work and I really wanted to grow. I wanted to get better and somehow become more excellent at my art. I had a nagging sense that my work was not as good as it could be and there was something missing. There was something that there was just this feeling that I could be doing a lot more in my work. What did I mean by more? How did I want to grow specifically? It was hard to know where to go or how to focus my efforts. There were thousands of possible ways in which I could improve, which of course made it impossible to know any single way that would be the most worthy of my attention. When faced with the abyss of the infinite of all these possibilities, there's really only one thing to do, and that's write out some goals. In order to know what to focus on and how to spend our time and how to focus our efforts, we need to have an overall trajectory. Where is this thing going? And we can find that trajectory very often just through writing it out or talking it out loud with someone, perhaps. The biggest thing I wanted to know at the time was how my work stacked up to people in the illustration industry. My goals at the time, which in my memory right now are a little bit hazy, but they were somewhere around pushing my craft and mastering my techniques and making art that was somehow more artful and serious or maybe to be taken more seriously. Now, I know these aren't super clear as goals, but they weren't a bad direction to be aimed at. So around the time, I'd heard that a magazine whose name shall remain anonymous, offered portfolio reviews. 20 minutes, six images, and one-on-one with an industry professional based in the epicenter of the American illustration scene, New York City. Now, I knew that the only way to grow in the way that I wanted to was to get some outside professional feedback. And it's crazy to say this out loud, but At this time, I'd already felt like I was more at the top of my game than anyone else I knew. Now, just for context, uh, I just knew very few illustrators in my city of Vancouver, and I didn't know very many illustrators, you know, even in my country. I was just kind of like, I felt alone. And if there were other illustrators to be kind of in community with to kind of make me know where my place was, Uh, I just didn't have that. And so I felt very much like I was really far ahead compared to anyone that I knew. 
And so, yeah, it, 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 it's a bit myopic in retrospect to, to feel like I'm at, at the top of my game. But I'm saying all this to say I had a big ego. But I knew I had a big ego. And I, I knew that I, I, I had to do something about this. In, in some way, I knew that I needed my ego burst. Somehow, at this time, I'd carved out a nice little niche for myself as an illustrator. And within this niche, I kind of felt like I was number one. And it didn't help that I was constantly being approached by others for advice and for interviews. So even though I, I look back and I see myself as someone who was very early on in my own career, people who were around me were seeing me as the expert. People were asking me, like, Tom, how'd you do it? How did you get to where you are? So it was kind of humbling to book a portfolio review. It was also very scary. I knew how my own little circle of fans and clients felt about my work, but what about industry leaders way outside of my bubble, way over in New York City? And what work should I show them? In this portfolio review, we ha I had to share six pieces. And so I, I had to ask, what six pieces most represent my experience and my voice as an illustrator? If you've ever had to put together a portfolio like this, you know the feeling well. Suddenly, all the work you kind of vaguely know exists, which you, you know you spent a lot of time working on, and you're very proud of it in many ways. It's all suddenly now under the microscope. Suddenly, all that work that you have in front of you, now that you're really looking at it, it just doesn't seem that impressive to you. I knew the review would be critical. I knew that I'd learn something that I hadn't perceived before. I expected that I would get some valuable pointers by having someone so outside of my own world give me feedback on my work. But I think I also thought maybe I'd impress them in the way I seem to impress others. I had this sort of split belief, which on the one side was that I wasn't as good as I could be, but on the other, that I was somehow far more prodigious and talented than I could recognize myself. Yes, this was super delusional, but I guess I just kind of hoped that going into the review with this person, and let's call him Edward, I thought that maybe Edward would reflect this second belief back to me. Even though I was doing this critique or this portfolio review to learn and to grow and to poke holes in my work on purpose, what I secretly hoped for was comfort. Edward destroyed my ego that day. He knew what his job was, and it wasn't to give me comfort. While I can't go into details right now, I can say that everything I hoped my work could be, what I hoped would be validated, was challenged right there and then. I wanted my work to be taken seriously. I wanted to make work with substance. I wanted my work to be intelligent, maybe even beautiful. According to Edward, though, it lacked depth and it was too throwbacky. It was too retro and not original enough. Edward was harsher than I expected, but what did I expect? It wasn't really based in anything real, whatever I expected. So even though I left that critique with my tail between my legs, I knew it was what I needed. It gave me a lot to think about, and it certainly gave me the outside perspective I had hoped for. And how else are we supposed to really grow outside of our own little comfortable worlds unless someone from the outside calls us out of it? Over the years, I've heard from at least three other illustrators who met with this same Edward, and their experiences were similar. He tore them apart. Interestingly, though, not one of these fellow artists thought it was a good experience. They didn't seem to get what they needed from the review. They were overly discouraged. While Edward's style of critique might be a little bit on the harsh side, my sense is that these fellow artists just weren't ready for him. For whatever reason, they needed comfort, not solutions. If I learned anything from my time with Edward, I learned that at least to some people, I'm just not that good. Or 
at least I'm not their cup of tea. But I was able to accept the challenge to dig deeper, both in my ideas and in my style. And I think it's because of that little portfolio review that it was eventually able to become more sophisticated and less formulaic in my work. Chapter two, the purpose of feedback. So what is the point of feedback? Well, it depends on who you are and where you're at, but it's almost always about getting better. It's about us getting better than where we're at right now. And it's about whatever work we're getting feedback on being as good as it can be. Or as we now know, it's about getting the work to work as intended. We've already talked about getting feedback as comfort, and now we're talking about feedback for solutions. With this kind of feedback, we're not looking to others to solve our problems for us, but we are looking to solve a problem. That problem is generally going to be something like not knowing what's wrong with our work. We need the help of outside feedback to diagnose this for us. When we know what's wrong, we can start to try and fix it. This kind of feedback is called critique. And I don't know why we say it in French with sort of a French accent. Maybe it sounds somehow elevated or special than when just said in English, which literally translated is criticism. Critique just means criticism. And when we're trying to learn and grow, what we're doing is basically we're going out to find someone to criticize our work on purpose. Now, just as a point of clarification here, there's a difference between the kind of feedback we seek from fellow illustrators or leaders in our field and the kind we might seek from our clients. Clients shouldn't be our critics. In my opinion, we should rarely, if ever, seek critique from our clients on our work. Critique should come from experienced professionals or people who understand illustration from the inside. We're going to talk about client feedback in an upcoming episode, I'm sure. It's just a whole other can of worms, and I just want to get that out of the way before we move on. So critique is the kind of feedback we need in order to identify anything amiss in our work. We want to know what's wrong with it, and we look to others who know what they're talking about to help us do that. So if you've been looking for feedback on your work lately, think about the kind of work that that might be. In which situations do we think, hmm, I really want someone to look at my work and tell me what's wrong with it. Why would we go and do that? Obviously, it's to know what's wrong with it in the first place so we can go and fix it. Now, there are two main kinds of situations where we crave feedback. The first is when we're working on a project. Maybe we're working on an assignment and just want to get someone else's eyes on it to see how it could be improved. This, of course, would be project feedback. The other situation is more about our body of work, like where I was when I wanted to get my portfolio review from Edward. Eventually, once we do a bunch of individual projects, we'll want to assemble them into some kind of portfolio, a way of showing our best work so we can achieve some kind of bigger goal like get more client work or land a dream job. This, of course, is called portfolio feedback. So what is your feedback need right now? Is it project feedback or portfolio feedback? The next thing to figure out from there is what you need help with more specifically. If it's on a project, what part of the process are you at right now? Where are you stuck? What questions do you have about it? It doesn't matter how far along you are, you can seek feedback anywhere as long as you have something to have feedback on. It's just about knowing what you need help with right now and being able to explain that to whomever you're talking to. In fact, knowing what you need help with will help you know who to talk to in the first place. So feedback is most helpful when we have something specific for someone else to react to beyond something more generally like, hey, what do you think of this? This means you need to have an idea of what you're trying to do with your work. It's hard to critique a page full of doodles, but much easier to give feedback on sketches 
for an editorial illustration, for example. At least with the latter, you can describe the project details and goals, such as what the article is about and what the illustration is supposed to represent. Then the person giving you feedback, let's call them the critic, is able to actually talk about these things. The conversation is around what the work is doing rather than whether they just like it or not. Now let's dig deeper into project feedback. We'll talk about who to reach out for this kind of feedback in a few moments, but it's also important to know when in the process you'll get the most from it, when in the process you should take your work to someone for feedback. There are two main stages of the illustration process where feedback is going to be the most helpful for you and in which your critic will be able to give you the most pointed feedback. And these are, of course, sketches and finals. These are points at which you've put some thought into what you're trying to do in your illustration and you've attempted to do that first in rougher sketches and then later in the finished artwork. When you're working on an illustration project, whether that's a class assignment or a personal project or client work, hopefully you're starting with sketches first. Sketches are where we work out our solutions to whatever visual problems we've been given. Usually it's where we work out our ideas, but it's also where we work out things like subject matter and composition. I often describe these things in terms of the three C's or concept, content, and composition. Here we're looking at what's the big idea in the work and what objects or symbols are we using to represent that idea and how are these things being arranged or composed on the page. When you're seeking feedback on sketches, critique can be framed around concept, content, and composition. This keeps the focus on the pure essentials of the image before getting deeper into more finished aspects of the image like style, technique, or color. So at the sketches stage, you should be aiming to have an idea or to tell a story, and then your conversation can be around how you're trying to do that. You should come to the critique with some sketches that are as complete as possible. If all you have are very loose notions but haven't really brought any one idea to a full thought, you may not be ready for feedback. You know, perhaps at this stage, if you're really stuck, it may help to talk things out with someone, but I wouldn't consider this feedback as much as more like bouncing ideas off of one another. This is a totally valid and super important thing to do at times. It can really help us think things through in a way that we couldn't just on our own, but I would just see this more as a conversation on the way to a more full sketch and not a time for feedback on your work, strictly speaking. Another thing that I do if I don't have someone to talk about my ideas with, which is actually most of the time, is just writing or recording myself talking about my half-baked ideas. Maybe I'm on a run and I'm just recording it on my phone. Sometimes all it takes is just taking some time to put these vague, cloudy thoughts we have into words. My writing instructor in my first year of art school used to say, if you say you have an idea, but you can't put it in words, then you don't have an idea yet. So in our work, an idea that we can't put into words is kind of like an unfinished sentence. We just have more work to do. But hopefully at some point you have a full idea or even better, a handful of ideas or sketches to bring to someone else for feedback. Now together, you can talk about these ideas. And by ideas here, I mean sketches that include your three C's, your concept, content, and composition. Now one more point here before we move on. The best feedback at this stage should be diagnostic. Don't look to your critic to give you their ideas. Look for clues about what your ideas are. Your job as an illustrator is to have a point of view and the better you get at mining your, your own self for your own ideas, the stronger your voice is going to be as an artist. In my opinion, it's never the job of the critic to tell you what your ideas should or could have been. And it's not even their job to tell you how to fix an artistic problem, like how to balance a composition or which exact content you should use to tell your story. 
A good critic or mentor will be able to give you their own perspective on some key problems in your work without being overbearing about what the solutions should be. They should be diagnosing what the problems are and letting you come to your own solutions. Turning now to the next stage for feedback, a final illustration is of course the completed work. It's the result of taking a sketch and fleshing it out into a fully finished illustration using certain tools, techniques, and stylistic decisions. The sketch is only a blueprint or a framework for a more finished illustration. A huge question many of us will ask on the way to a finished illustration is, of course, when is it actually finished? Truly, we could probably continue to work on an illustration for infinity if we were picky enough. We have to eventually make do with something and, and just call it done. So let's just say an illustration is finished when the intended message or idea is coming through clearly and it appears satisfyingly complete. It holds together without looking like it's missing something. The sketch has been transformed into something perhaps more magical. All the finishing touches are there. Now, of course, we all know what finished looks like when we see it, but sometimes it's hard to know for sure how to get it there. And this is where getting feedback from other illustrators, hopefully more experienced than we are, can be super helpful. Sometimes we just can't tell if an illustration is finished or not, or we perceive that something's not, it's just something that's not quite right, but we can't say exactly why. Especially when we're still working out our style and technique, knowing how to make an illustration come together in a way that looks finished and professional is really hard to do. And that's because we're still learning our craft. And in this sense, a lot of the critique we'll need at this stage as beginning illustrators is in the craft. That is in the way we've used our tools and techniques and our artistic skills to transform a sketch into a finished illustration. Ideally, we should have a very clean process with the idea and structure of the illustration buttoned down in the sketches stage. And if we're following my advice here perfectly, we would have already gotten our feedback on these things. Now, working in the finals, we should be able to focus on the craft part. Invariably, however, beginners are going to struggle with the whole process all at once. We won't know how to sketch toward final illustrations because we don't know what our final illustrations even look like. We haven't developed a style yet. So how could we know how to structure our sketches in a way that matches such a style later on? The reality is that very often we have to work out our ideas even as we're trying to execute them in a more finished way. There's a lot of overlap between the sketches and final stages and we're trying to work out a whole bunch of stuff all at once. And this is what can really break our brains and make it impossible to know how to finish an illustration. And I think what often happens is that we are tempted to skip all the sketching process stuff and jump right into some kind of finished illustration technique. You know, the classic move is to jump into Procreate or Photoshop or Illustrator and just start trying to make an illustration without first having put some time in working out ideas and the three C's we talked about earlier. It's so much more satisfying to see something that looks more finished, even if it's just a really lovely brush we found in Procreate or to see some crisp lines from the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator. This is just an aside to acknowledge the struggle of learning how to do sketches first and then and only then to move into the final stage. It's because these things sort of start foggy and messy and full of uncertainty. Somehow in time though, we do start to find certain things working and coming together and we find our way. I mean, when we start off as humans, like as babies, we have to learn how to talk and then how to walk and how to understand the world around us. And of course, it's a long time before we grow into a place where we're walking and talking and finding our way through the world with confidence. We're learning all these things all at once. And it is very messy. Can you say, you know, what, what the right order to develop as a human is? Can you say in which order you developed as a human is? Or like what came first? Like 
your ability to have language and then to walk, it's messy at first. And while we're in that stage, it's hard to even notice anything happening. We're still creative babies. Anyway, my point here is that getting critique on our final illustrations can really help us develop our craft. Where it comes to developing our technique and our style, which ultimately is our way of giving life to our otherwise black and white sketches, feedback from knowledgeable professionals and fellow illustrators can be very powerful. Much later on, when we have a more fully developed style, of course, we won't need so much feedback on these things. In fact, we may even want to steer feedback around the question of style to protect it. There are some things that just can't be up for discussion if, we're, if we deem them essential to our personal visual language. In some sense, parts of our style are sacrosanct. Now, I know we're not talking about client feedback right now, but this is actually a huge reason why getting most of a client's feedback on our work should happen at the time of sketches, because there should be much less input anyone should have on how we use our style and technique to execute on our ideas or sketches. But again, this is a bit of an aside. As for our ideas, no matter where we're at in our development, they're always up for critique. And even if we have a well-developed style and we've mastered our technique, our executions aren't always going to be flawless. We can always use some outside perspective, especially if we want to know what others really think and how they perceive our work. I think the most important thing to come into a critique with, whether we're beginners or more experienced, is an open mind. We should embrace our uncertainty and the fact that we don't have all the answers. We should be questioning our own work and encouraging others to do the same. The best way to do this, I think, is to spend some time formulating our questions and uncertainties, ideally in writing. In this way, we can steer the feedback around where we truly want it. Ultimately, when getting critique on our finals, the conversation should be focused more on execution. While it's often hard to separate concept from style or idea from execution, I think we should aim to have the idea part nailed down at the sketches stage. Then we should let feedback on the final stage focus more around the style and technique aspect. These are things like color, shape, details, line quality, use of negative, negative and positive space, shading, textures, and brushes and stuff like that. Of course, when we're learning how to do everything, like sketching, illustrating, final stuff, technique, all that stuff, it's understandable that getting feedback on our work at any stage is going to be a bit muddier. So that really wraps up my thoughts on getting project feedback. The other kind of feedback, of course, is on our portfolio. I already told you about my experience getting a portfolio review even after working in the industry for three years. Now, the purpose of a portfolio review is ultimately about knowing where you stand in the eyes of the industry. You want to know if the story you're telling with a selection of work you've decided to call your portfolio is landing in the right way. The purpose of a portfolio itself is, of course, to demonstrate our style, our skills and experience so that other people will pay us to illustrate for them. Isn't that why we're illustrators, right? It's our job. Our portfolio is the closest thing to a storefront most of us are going to have. So how to put together a portfolio is, of course, a totally different subject. Well, not totally different, but it's definitely different from feedback. But once you have a portfolio, especially at first, it really helps to know how it's working. Again, at the beginning, we just don't know how to evaluate our own work. We need to run it by someone who knows something about illustration. Hopefully someone in the industry who has a little bit more of uh, just a little bit more experience so that they can help us up a little bit. If you're at this point where you have a body of work, which could be anywhere between five and 15 or more pieces, it helps to have an idea of what you're trying to do. What is the overall goal of your portfolio? Your portfolio is sort of like a story of who you are and what you want 
as an artist, what story do you want to tell with your portfolio? Well, who are you as an illustrator and what kind of illustrations do you make and what kind of clients or projects would you like to work on or attract? For example, an animation focused portfolio is going to show very different work than an editorial one. Now I've got to say the purpose of a portfolio review or getting feedback on one isn't for you to be perfect. It's not an exam and you don't have to aim to get a hundred percent when you're getting feedback on it. We're not looking for comfort here, but we should come in knowing what we want, whether that's to have a portfolio of work that has a consistent style or to show a collection of work that demonstrates professional experience, or perhaps one that shows that we can be very versatile and work in multiple styles. It's not about having a perfect portfolio, but in telling a clear story with it and in knowing how to do this better. It's the job of our critics to help us with this. Now, one of the big questions we're gonna have at the very beginning is just whether our portfolio looks professional or industry ready yet. This is a great question to come into a review with, and it's a great reason to know more clearly what corner of the industry you want to get into. It will really help focus the conversation on whether your portfolio is getting you closer to that goal or not. Now, just as we have a purpose for our individual projects, we need to have a purpose for our portfolio. It needs to go beyond a general one-stop shop or showcase of everything we can do or have ever done. And it also needs to be more than a place for showing our process or sharing our journey. These are great ways to use social media or blogs, but maybe not the best use as uh, like, like the best use of our professional portfolio. Really, we're trying to figure out who we are as artists and how we communicate this through our body of work. This is how we find our customers and how we make it easier for them to find us. This is really the focus of a portfolio. Now, I should note here that by portfolio, I'm not necessarily talking about the design of your homepage or where, wherever else you should be showing your work and in which format. These are definitely things that matter, but where it comes to a portfolio review, the focus should be on your body of work, which pieces should you include and which maybe should you exclude. And given your body of work, what seems to be missing for the kind of story you want to be telling? What kinds of projects should you be working on next? If you want to include the design of your portfolio as well, by all means, bring that as part of the purpose uh, for seeking feedback. But just like it's easy to get caught up in fancy illustration tools rather than developing our ideas, it's easy to get all caught up in templates and menus and widgets when designing our portfolio instead of the actual work. And even though I think branding is super important for us as illustrators, it's possible to get all caught up in designing our logo and choosing fonts and colors when really we should still be uh, developing our work and ultimately with our first portfolio, letting the work speak for itself and for others to be able to reflect back to us about what it says to them. So when getting feedback on your portfolio, make it about the work and specifically about the body of work as a whole. Be sure to distinguish between the conversation about your work and the conversation about how you're showing the work. Both of these are important, but they're not the same thing. So finally, we get to the big question. I know you're all wondering, where on earth do you find good feedback? Well, let's just summarize everything we've talked about so far, and then we're gonna get into where to find the feedback. So. In the last episode, we talked about comfort versus solutions and that sometimes we just need encouragement while other times we need solutions, i.e. critique. And now we know because we talked about it today that getting critique is all about seeking criticism on our work. We want to know what's working and not so we can fix what's not working. We learned how there are two overarching situations in which we'll need feedback and that's on individual projects and then on our portfolios. Often the critique we get on individual projects happens during the process, whereas a portfolio critique is more about the work we've completed as a whole. 
When getting feedback on our projects, the two most useful times to get it are on our sketches and then on our final illustrations. It's best if we can focus the feedback we get on the sketches around things like concept, content, and composition. Then in finals, we can focus the conversation around the execution with things like style and technique. When getting feedback on our portfolios, we can relax a little and know that it's not about being perfect. This shouldn't be an exam that we need to ace. It's more about placing ourselves where we are in our development as artists and what can we do to get to where we want to be. When getting our portfolios reviewed, we do best to come knowing what we want to do with them. What are our goals? What are we trying to say with our work? And does that come across according to our critics? So finally, I want to leave you with some advice about where to get feedback. The first thing is that the best feedback is going to be from people in the industry. And hopefully these people have a little bit more experience than you, especially if you're a beginner. Don't seek feedback from your friends or family. I think that's just kind of the big problem we're trying to fix here. We want objective, critical, professional feedback. We want solutions, not comfort. So where are you going to find a pro who's willing to spend time reviewing your work with you? For many of us, we don't have access to professionals, especially if we're self-taught. We just don't have a network yet. If you're a student in a classroom setting, whether virtual or in person, you're probably in a much better place to get feedback than anyone else. Your teachers are the ones who are there to give you feedback and critique. It's literally their job. However, if you're ever frustrated with their ability to give you feedback, be sure to be as specific to them about what your goals are and the questions or struggles you're having um, as, like with the work, whatever the assignment is, and you can have a better conversation around it in that way. For everyone else, the good news is that almost all of us can have access to professional feedback. Whether you're looking for feedback on a single project or you need a portfolio review, People exist out there who offer these services. Now, please note that everything I'm about to mention today is just a sampling of what's out there. And I I just want to help you get started. And I want you to know that you can get good feedback no matter who you are. I'll leave links to all of these in the show notes. And these are just for your convenience and information. Please just know that I'm not endorsing any of these services and it's up to you to do your own research so buyer beware just do your research and um, hopefully these just give you a good starting point so let's get into them so for portfolio reviews there are a few places off the top of my head and i'm just going to list these there's three by three who offer portfolio reviews online and they do it over video chat And there's also the illustration department who offers a bunch of different options at different pricing tiers. And they do things like live video calls and they do reviews done just over email. Uh, Just for a couple more, there's the Society of Publication Designers and the Business of Illustration. And another place to look for portfolio reviews is through nearby colleges or universities. If they have an illustration program, it's entirely likely that they have portfolio reviews from time to time. You can actually go to a a website called nationalportfolioday.org and you can use it to find a university-led event like this that's close to you. Of course, these kinds of programs run by the universities are going to be more geared toward those trying to get into school. But even still, like you might learn a lot and if they're free, like why the heck not? Another thing that I found out just in my research is that you can use eventbrite.com to search for any kind of event, and that includes portfolio reviews, and and it's very location-based. So you just type in like portfolio reviews and type in where your location is, and uh, hopefully you'll see a listing of uh, such events that are accessible to you. Another great option, especially as you're working to develop your first professional portfolio is by working with a professional illustration coach or professional illustration mentor. There are many 
of such people out there, like if you just do a Google search. So it's really just a matter of doing some research and looking for coaches that have experience in the industry or market that you're most interested in. So if you want to do animation type illustration, you want to find a coach who has some experience in that themselves. And I would just say, like, be sure to look at their own work. Hopefully, as a coach, they also have done illustration. And you just want to make sure that you respect their work as much as possible. And another thing that you should probably look for, if possible, is to see if they have reviews or testimonials to make sure they're actually good as coaches. And be sure to know the difference between art or drawing coaches and professional illustration coaches. They're definitely not the same thing. What you should definitely not do, though, is reach out to illustrators you don't know and ask them to review your work. Well, I think it's okay to reach out in a more casual way, maybe as a fan or a, an admirer, just, just saying, hello, I love your work or something like that. Asking directly for feedback on your work, kind of out of the blue, can seem kind of disrespectful. You know, if you can find someone in this way, then more power to you, you know, it's possible. But I just think that there's something to be said about investing in your own growth rather than expecting someone else who doesn't know you to give you a slice of their very limited time. Instead, you should find a professional coach or mentor who would be more than happy to give you the time and attention you deserve. Ultimately, you get what you pay for. So when you need feedback on individual projects, of course, working with a professional illustration coach is going to be your best bet just be sure to do your research and look for someone who is aligned with your style, your goals, and values as much as possible. Again, and this is not a, a paid plug, but the illustration department is one of the best examples I could find in this area. They not only do portfolio reviews, but they offer a whole suite of packages for illustrators with different goals. Now, it's not cheap, but when you compare it with paying for like a whole art education, it starts to look like a pretty smoking deal. And if you're a student, I want, I want to encourage you, just take advantage of your teachers. They're literally there to mentor you and to coach you. Now, often we find ourselves needing feedback right now. And if you're working on a client project on a deadline, this is where being part of a critique group or a community of illustrators might be a good option. Peer feedback can be super helpful if you can find it. The trick, of course, is just that these groups are usually small and private, not advertised. Uh, they're held among friends. So it may be time for you to start building your, net, your network. You can, you can do this just by seeking out people that seem to be in a similar part of the journey. Perhaps they're students in the same class or people you know from social media. Sometimes we don't have what we need and it's up to us to lead the way ourselves. This is a great way to rise up, carve a little niche of your own and even make some friends along the way. I'll just put in a little plug for my own Discord server here where there are a lot of members, but very few of them are actually taking advantage of this connection. If you're a patron, if you're one of my patrons, head over to the Discord server and put something up for review on the critiques channel. It's there for you. I'll just add here, and this is super important, and I can't believe I almost forgot to mention it, is that when you post work up for critique, especially in like a crit group like this, but wherever it happens to be, be sure to ask for specific feedback. I can't stress that enough. So many people will post their work, like say on my uh, Skillshare class projects, and they'll just say, let me know what you think. And then surprisingly, nobody responds. Hi, have you ever done this? Have you ever posted something maybe on social media and you said, what do you think? And you got crickets. Is it because nobody saw the work or is it because the work is so bad and nobody wants to say something rude so they don't say anything at all? Personally, I think it's more likely that people just don't feel moved to say anything. You haven't given them a reason to give you feedback. It's not that the work is bad, it's that the invitation to give feedback wasn't compelling enough. 
But if you give people a good question to answer, they'll hardly be able to resist. The difference between getting a critique and getting crickets, it could be all in how you set up the question. When students post work on my classes and they ask me, you know, what, what do you think? I almost always put it back on them to tell me what they're trying to work out because what I think about their work may or may not matter and it may or may not even be what they want to hear. I get all kinds of student projects that fall outside of my taste and I get work from students at many different skill levels that has nothing to do with how good or bad the student is. What matters is that I can give them feedback that matches where they're at and which is focused on what they're trying to work out. Because we're dealing with fragile artist hearts here, giving feedback should always be treated like, like a delicate operation. It's not that I want to coddle people. It's just that I believe that the best way to call people up is to show them how they're already on their way. Regardless of where you find feedback, Remember that it's always on you to define your own goals. It's up to you to know what you want. It's up to you to define the problems you're trying to work out. It's up to you to know when you're ready to put yourself out there and seek feedback. I think so often we want someone to swoop into our lives to discover our talent and then guide us to success. I think we all want a mentor like a Yoda to our Luke Skywalker who knows what we're truly capable of if we could just be more disciplined and focus. But few of us are going to find the Yodas we want. Even when we find a coach or industry leader to review our work with us, we may find that they can only take us so far. I've never been 100% satisfied with any single mentor in my own life. Everyone kind of gets me in certain ways, but nobody knows me in full. It turns out the most I can expect from others is outside feedback. But it's up to me which of that feedback I take inside and let become a part of who I am. What we don't want, even if we think we do, is for others to tell us where to go or what we should do. The best mentors will know that the best way to help us is to help us formulate our own questions in our own way forward. When you're looking for feedback or guidance, wherever you happen to be looking, remember that your critic's job is to show you the door, but it's only you who can choose to open it. My name is Mr. Tom Froze, and those were my thoughts on illustration. You can find links to all my things at tomfroze.com, including my Patreon, YouTube channel, and Skillshare classes. Remember to rate and review, like, subscribe, follow, tell your friends, all those lovely things. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next one. This podcast was written and performed without the aid of artificial intelligence. Adobe Podcast AI was used to improve the sound, and I used Lensa, an AI-based photo app, to make me look more handsome in the YouTube thumbnail photo. Today's episode was produced by me, Mr. Tom Froze. Special thanks to my script editor, Julia Herrick, and to my audio video engineer, Mark Allen Falk.